G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. It's been a long time since I have spoken to you. In fact, at the beginning of the year, I think in January, I uploaded a flurry of videos, lots of activity, you know, that new year sort of hype. This is what I'm going to do this year. Lots and lots of plans. Not a great deal of it has come to fruition. Certainly the gaming hasn't come to fruition. I have painted a fair few miniatures, but not as regularly as I said I was going to, that I might have said that I was going to. I don't know. It's now May. We're almost halfway through the year, and I've done no videos. I think that was one of my, one of my things in my 2016 mission was to do a video a week or some other sort of crap. Who knows? You've, if you've been watching me for long enough, you know that things happen in, in, in fits and bursts. It's just because I'm incredibly busy with Knights of Dice. That's going fantastically well, and I'll talk about that later on on the Knights of Dice channel, which we re-uploaded or yeah, re-uploaded an introduction video for, and haven't put anything else up. I've got to get some stuff up there. There's plenty of stuff that we can that we can put up there, and that I really should put up to help showcase and highlight and uh, help our customers. Um, deal with some of the complexities of some of our kits and uh, some of the versatility of our kits um, and how you can change some parts around and swap pieces in and out to make uh, some variants of different uh, um, uh, kits that are available. Anyway, that's a side issue. What am I doing? What are we doing here? If, you, if you're watching, I don't know how many people are these days. Uh, uh, my content is non-existent, so it, this doesn't reach a lot of people. But nonetheless, I'm excited. And anyone who knows me knows that when I'm excited, I make videos, and I, I popped one up the other day on uh, on my Facebook page, yeah, on Rubbish In, Rubbish Out, about that little, uh, you can go check it out, it's in the description below, uh, a little uh, magnetized Lazy Susan for my figures when I paint, it's, it's, it's made things so much easier, and in fact it's made things slightly quicker, uh, because I'm not messing around trying to reach and get figures and, anyway, rambling. If you want to see that little video, I was excited, I made a video. I'm excited now, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm here, and I've done this so many times, but this time, I'll swear, I'll do something about it. I want to talk about tribal. Um, I, I swear, this will go somewhere. Um, this, this, this rant, this video, I've mentioned before that I'm interested in the game and not very much has happened with it. But, this time, the guys that make tribal from Mana Press are here in Melbourne. And I had the tremendous pleasure of hanging out with those guys for quite a number of days when we were at Salute this year in April. I bumped into them in Brunei in the airport on the way there. We went from Melbourne to Brunei, Brunei to Dubai, Dubai to Heathrow. And I bumped into them in, uh, in Brunei and they came and said, hey Viv, how are you going? Blah, 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 I had a chat. Um, and I have to admit, at that point, um, uh, I didn't recognize Lon. Uh, he knew who I was. Apparently we'd spoken a couple of times at various uh, conventions and whatnot. Anyway, he came up to me and said, G'day, Viv, how are you going? I was shocked. Um, sitting in a, in a little regional airport in Brunei. Brunei's not a big place. Um, I, the last thing I expected was to bump into someone going to salute. I think what gave it away was I was sitting there reading a rule book. Um, anyway, so those guys from Manor Press, based here in Melbourne, I've spoken to them a number of times now, and we've gone out, had beers, hopefully we're going out again next week, and catch up and uh, go to another English pub. Um, like I said, we spent a lot of time in England together in little pubs, spent a lot of time together in Nottingham, uh, and those guys went up north, and I went out to see Dread out in the, um, the uh, West Midlands, and um, they had a blast. There's so many pictures from them on Facebook of meeting a whole bunch of people, the Perry twins, um, Tony Barton, oh, it, it, it was lots that those guys did. I was a little bit jealous. Anyway, so they've just released their game Tribal, which they were showing at Salute. Um, it's a, a very simple rule set. It's a very fun rule set. It has a lot of... Uh, um, the complexity is not the right word, but it has enough flavor for the games to be interesting, yet at the same time keeping the mechanics simple. That was one of the things that I loved about Saga. Excuse me while I search for a glass of water that doesn't seem to be here. Forget about the glass of water. That was one thing I loved about Saga. It was it was simple, but it had enough flavor, and that came from the battle boards um, to make the relatively basic mechanics of the game fun. And that's what I love. I love fun games. I don't love games that have overly unnecessary complexity or necessary complexity to make the game playable. That's why I've never really got back into Malifaux. It was just way too complex. 
way too many special abilities, way too many miniatures and models. When we stopped about, back at the bunker and the, and the game was new, there was a manageable, from a retailer's perspective, a manageable product line. You didn't need a lot of space. You, you could know the products, you could know the characters, and you could sell it. You could support the game well. And then it just fucking exploded. A dozen new, new, new releases every month. It take up more shelf space, massive amounts of investment. You have to learn a whole bunch of stuff, and the game got complex, super, super quick. I don't didn't like it. I haven't gone back to it. Infinity. I've never been a huge sci-fi person, despite the fact that I'm getting into Gates of Antares, and we'll talk about that later. Um, what the complexity it just seems like an overly complex game. Now I know if you play these games, you're sitting there going, oh, it's fucking easy to play, oh, blah, blah, this D20, roll this under this 14, fucking three hits on that, and hide around this corner, and fucking come out of a rabbit hole and shoot that guy in the butt. It's not fucking easy, all right? If you want a fucking easy rule set, check out Tribal, check out Saga. They're easy rule sets. They're the rule sets that I like. Dead Man's Hand, um, In Her Majesty's Name, Blood Eagle, which I'll be talking about later on, Twilight. These are fun, small skirmish games that don't cost a packet to get into. It's not an arms race. Every time a new wave of miniatures is released, you've got to fucking get it because you, you, if you want to remain competitive, you need those figures. It's not, the, none of these games are like that. That's why I love them. So Tribal. What is it? It's a obviously two-player. No solo play rules at this point. I've read through the, the PDF, now you can buy this, there's a link in the description, it's available now from War Games Vault um, as a digital full color PDF, and I think maybe now they've also released a uh, printer friendly version, which you get for free if you buy the color copy or it costs six bucks or something, I don't, I don't, I don't know, it's in the description. I'm pretty sure it's up there. Go check it out, it's in the description. Um, so it's a two player skirmish game, set in sort of pre-gunpowder period, pre-colonial period, I guess you could even say, of tribal warfare. Now, the cover art on the tribal rulebook is obviously um, Polynesian, Maori, that sort of Polynesian area of the world. Uh, one of the game designers, Ara, and in fact Lon uh, from Mana Press, they're both from New Zealand. Um, they're both here in Australia now. Um, Ara is an Australian citizen. I think Lon has been here long enough. He should be an Australian citizen. Anyway, like I mentioned on Facebook, uh, anything good that New Zealand makes or has or anyone who's become famous, who spent time in Australia, is Australian, right? So this is an Australian game, despite the fact that they're both from New Zealand. But they live here now, and it's good, so we're claiming it, all right? People across the, the ditch, it's our game. Um, it's set in that sort of period. So any tribal culture that you can imagine, you could, you could use this rule set for anything, actually. Lucky you could any rule set. Blah, blah, blah. Scott's talking about wanting to use his lizardmen. Fine, whatever. It's not a historical game. It's far from being a historical game. Like Saga is not a historical game. It's, it has that historical uh, sort of context, but it's not a historical game like Black Powder or Pike and Shot, um, or, 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 or DBM, or, or those sorts of historical games, or Warhammer Ancient Battles, those games that are set in, a, in, a, in sort of that sort of historical period. Now, yes, it's, 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 it's a mildly difficult sort of concept to explain, that whilst this is set in a historical period, i.e. Pre, pre-colonial, pre-gunpowder period, it's... Uh, it's something that you could just rock around and, and play Maoris, for example, versus Aztecs. Now, people do that in historical games because you need to have someone to fight. If you're playing historical reenactments, it's slightly different. Anyway, I don't want to get into that complexity because that is a whole big discussion for the, to the, the super, super interested histori his, historical gamers. And that's not what I am. I'm not a massive historical gamer. But I like this. I like guys running around with, with, with clubs and spears and sort of different sorts of hand weapons. Now there are archers in the game, missile weapons, um, but they're limited. R really, in this game, honor is key, right? And it's mentioned all throughout the rulebook, and honor is actually how you build your game, and it's how you win scenarios. Whether you actually comp complete your objectives or not, if you finish the game with less honor, 
then your opponent, you have lost. It doesn't matter if you completed all the scenario objectives. If you didn't do it with honor, you're fucked. Get out of here. Honor is key. You fight honorably, you live honorably, you die honorably, and if you don't, you're not the winner. Simple as that. Um, and so, in a lot of these cultures, you forehand to hand. It was honorable. Missile weapons was, was sort of the coward's way of fighting. They were generally, and the rule book explains this, restricted to the very young or the very old. If you were a warrior, you fought hand to hand and clubbed your opponent to death with, with a club, or you hacked him to death with an axe or a sword. So the game covers that sort of style of gaming. It's upfront, it's personal, it's hand to hand. Now, the, the book has a whole bunch of special rules in it, um, a whole bunch of uh, um, optional rules uh, for different sorts of cultures. So if you wanted to play Vikings, you could play Vikings. Vikings are a tribal organization. Organization, culture, organization, what the fuck. So I think there's rules in there for Vikings. Ma uh, Maori's obviously uh, are right up in there. Um, gladiators, um, Aztecs have some special rules. There's about five or six different cultures at the back of the book. Now. Um, I'm waiting to get my physical copy of the book. I didn't pick one up when I was at Salute. I uh, hung out with Lon and Aaron. We sort of chatted to a few people. I spent the whole day walking around shopping, talking to different sorts of people, uh, meeting a whole bunch of people who watch me on YouTube. That was amazing. That was fantastic. I haven't done a Salute video. Fuck. Well, maybe I should. I took like 400 pictures. And anyway, by the time I got back to the tribal display table, fucking sold out of rule books. They only took 30 with them, right? They were gone in hours. It was super successful, super popular, um, lots of interest. Um, it is a fun, easy to learn. You can read these rules and learn the game. Saga was like that for me. I read the rules and learned the game. Coming back to Malifaux, Malifaux was a head fuck to learn. We had to like just start playing and then read a rule, read a page of the rule book and then try it on the tabletop. Read the next couple of pages and then try it on the tabletop. That's how we learn to play Malifaux. This game, I've never played a game of it. I've read the rule book twice. I know how to play a game. We could get up right now and I could show you how to play this game. Even though I've never played it before. It is super, super simple. The mechanics are super simple. But yet, at the same time, like I said, there's enough flavor in the rule set and, the, and, and uh, um, the special rules and its mechanics to keep the game fun and exciting. So um, let's have a quick look at this rule book. I'll see if we can just flip through it a little bit. It is full color. It's only 28 pages, 32 pages. It's a very, very small rule book. I think the rules are 12 pages. Fuck it. Let's have a quick flip through and we'll have a quick flip through. It. Yeah. Good one, Biv. So we're very technical today. My sc uh, screen capture software is not working. Um, anyway, so we'll have a real quick flip through the book just so you get a, a basic idea. It's 32 pages, right? By Lon Teal and Aramiha Harwood, Harwood, right? Peter Overton, you may know Peter Overton. Um, he's the guy running Twisted, another good Australian game. Um, rules developed by these guys. Nick Robson, you might know him from Eureka Miniatures. I don't know the other guys, I'm sorry. Scott Brennan and Adam R. Gelling. Anyway, let's have a quick flip through. So. Um, it's a nice book. It's, it's quite simple. There are a few uh, spelling errors and some grammar and punctuation and a little bit of sort of uh, problems with it, but um, in the overall it's very, very simple. We go through building a warband, which is very, very simple. Now this is one big mechanic. The game doesn't use any dice. It doesn't even use a tape measure. All it does is use cards. And I like that because um, there's always someone who doesn't have a tape measure. The number of times when I was running uh, uh, running my shop, the bunker, people didn't have templates. They wouldn't have tape measures. They'd borrow a fucking box of dice. This one, you just need cards. That handles your templates. It handles your movement. It handles your um, uh, chance to hit or defend yourself a la using dice. Um, uh, so I like that. There are some nice fancy pictures here, and, and, and these uh, uh, miniatures are all from Eureka Miniatures or from Foundry. Um, so as you can see here, some uh, Roman gladiators, blah, blah, blah. He goes through setting up the game, playing game, movement, distance, and terrain. How does all that work? And blah, 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 blah. How does combat work? Now, this is a really interesting mechanic because combat is brutal. 
and when we uh, get around to doing some videos, which uh, I'll do shortly, I'll probably do them with my Vikings because I don't have my Maoris painted at the moment, and uh, I'd rather just maintain some momentum uh, on the promotion of this game because I'm loving it uh, so far. Um, yeah, that might change when I've played four or five games. Um, but uh, the, mecha the mechanics for combat are really, really interesting. Um, so we go through, it goes nice big page on how combat works. Like I said, it's very simple. Skills, um, you spend honor to, uh, to give you guys skills at the beginning of the game. You get a certain number of honor points to start with, determined by the scenario. And you can spend that to recruit units. It's very simple, like Saga, one honor point gives you a unit, blah, blah, blah. You can have four or five units and a leader and a couple of heroes and we'll go through all of that later on. Then there's four scenarios in this little, uh, in this little book. Revenge, Raid, Ambush, and uh, Destruction. Um, optional rules for missile weapons, um, dirty tricks. There's a card pool, so you can sort of cheat some of your card flips if you need to or if you want to. Um, and then it goes through some historical settings for the, for the Maori, for Aztecs, for Vikings, uh, Gladiators of Rome, and then it's got some other periods here. And they're planning and writing some uh, expansions at the moment for uh, other tribal cultures. Um, and I'm sure uh, once they're ready, uh, they'll be released. So Cave Wars, Japanese clans of the Heian period, Iroquois War Bands, Morning Wars, and then a whole bunch more fancy pictures and a, and a reference table. So it's not a massive rule book. Like I said, 32 pages by Mana, Mana Press. I'm loving this at the moment. So let's get back out of here and look at my beautiful face again and my lovely, lovely beard. So there we go. Have an interest in fun, small skirmish games like me. This might be a game that you'll enjoy and I'll have some videos uh, more about this. Uh, both uh, sort of that I'll film either here at home in my gaming room um, or at the studio or with Lon and Ara. I'm catching up with them next week. Hopefully on Thursday we'll play some games uh, and we'll film that. We'll have a bit of a chat with the designers and talk to them about sort of uh, what they've got planned for the game. Now it is just a rule set at the moment. There are lots of miniature companies around that make miniatures that would fit this period. Knights of Dice have some. Our mud men fit perfectly with this. They're based off a, uh, a, a tribe in uh, the sort of the highlands of Papua New Guinea. Um, then Obviously, the new Maoris from uh, uh, Eureka Miniatures um, and their beautiful, beautiful Aztecs, uh, which I'm looking forward to putting together. Obviously, figures from Foundry. Lots and lots of figures make tribal-based miniatures. You can pick them up everywhere. So it's just a rule set that you're, that uh, these guys are publishing at the moment. Manor Press is a publishing house. They're publishing rules. They're primarily interested in publishing rules, but why am I fucking putting words in their mouth? We'll talk to those guys next week and we'll find out some more information about what they have planned. Who knows um, what, they're, that, what they'll do. Um, let's, let's leave it to them to talk about it. So if you're interested in Tribal, stay tuned to my channel. Uh, go check out Rubbish In, Rubbish Out, my page on, you, on Facebook. Link is in the description to that. I'll link also the Tribal um, uh, Facebook page. You can uh, click on that linky and go to their Facebook page. Uh, the fucking description's full of links. If you want information, I'll try and put it there with links and you can clicky clicky and uh, go there and find out for some more information. This has rambled on for way, way longer than I expected, but hey, why am I surprised? This is me filming an ad hoc video about something that I'm excited about. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. Push the red button and ramble. That's it. I'm going to cut it there. Maybe we'll come back. You know, fits and bursts. I'll have a catch up about what I've been doing this year. The only way I'll remember that is by going through Facebook. You're fucking, no more talking. It's over, we're done. Thanks for tuning in guys. Go check out Tribal if you're interested in, in the sort of games that I play and that you see me promoting. Um, this one I think is gonna be a game that, uh, that I'm gonna be playing a lot of. A, it's local for me. Uh, B, I think it's a great rule set. It's simple, it's quick, it's fun, and the miniatures are, are always fun. Get out of here, go, quick, fuck out and run out of the room. Maybe I'll have to leave. I'm fucking leaving. See you later, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time. Bye.